What's up riders? My name is Chewie. Today I'm going to put my bike inside my bike bag to give you guys a few tips on how to pack your bag to go traveling on a bike holiday with your bike. Now it's something I've done a load of and I'm freaking OCD when I pack my bike in my bag. Um, so I'm going to show you some tips on how to pack your bike so it doesn't get damaged because there's nothing worse than arriving first day of your bike trip and you're spending half the day racing around all the different bike shops to try and find spare parts to replace the ones that have been damaged because you didn't pack it nicely. Also, I'm gonna show you some tools to carry with you, some weight saving tips, and not one, not two, but three, three tips that you didn't know about for the common zip tie. Check it out. Zip tie trick number one. Now, this one falls under the category of things you've been doing wrong for your entire life. Go buy a packet of zip ties. What do you do when you first buy a packet of zip ties? You open them to get one out, don't you? What I've done for such a long time was get some scissors and cut the top off. And then what happens every time you pick up your bag of zip ties? Zip! Your zip ties fall out all over the floor. Here's what you do. Just like a tissue box, you'll make a small opening in the middle of the bag so that your zip ties stay in the bag and then whenever you need a zip tie, ta-da! You pull them out the middle like that and your zip ties don't fall out of the bag. Okay, zip tie tip number two. This one is for securing your cables so they don't flap around in the breeze. So every time you go over a bump, your cables flop about. Now I've just changed my dropper post cable and I've put a new wolf tooth dropper actuator on. So now my cables are loose and I want to put a zip tie on to stop this from flapping around. The little zip ties have a reputation for not being very strong. And when you put a zip tie on and even do it up tight, it still slides around and ends up not where you want it because your forks are going up and down, your bike's vibrating all the time. To stop your zip tie from sliding around, what you do is you buy zip ties, they're a little bit too long. Instead of just looping it around once and putting it through, what you do is you go around once, cross over twice, and then the third time around, you go zoop, and tighten them up like that. Now, your zip tie, won't slide around, it stays put two times around and then through. It looks a little bit less neat, okay, but it does not move, okay. And I also use it on the seat post to hold a little bit of tension on the cable, on the outer cable. Because if you've got a little bit of tension on the outer cable, for the frames that don't have internal cable routing, a little bit of tension will stop it from rattling a little bit. So don't forget to use your little flush cut pliers. Now these are from Nipex. Nipex are a great brand. A little bit expensive, but this little flush cut here means there's no sharp edge on the zip tie. Always cut them off as flush as you can, and the best way to do it is not with side cutters, because they've got a little chamfer on this edge. These flush cut make it perfectly flush, so there's no sharp edge after you cut your, or trim your zip tie. So whenever you pack your bike bag, throw in a couple of zip ties. They don't weigh anything, they're super handy. You can use them to lock your bike up against a fence if you need to go in and use a bathroom or something like that and you're worried about your bike getting nicked. It's gonna stop those opportunist thieves from running off with your bike. Number one thing that I've found for throwing zip ties in your bag is find these special zip ties. What makes this one so special? Check this out. Zip, and then there's a little lever on the head here. Can you see that? That makes it a reusable zip tie. Whoa, that lever is a release. How good is that? Go searching for reusable zip ties. Okay, business time. We're gonna pull the bike apart and get it in the bag. Now, I'm not gonna go through every step of pulling your bike apart and putting it in your bike bag because everyone wants to take off different things and uh, it's pretty straightforward and obvious anyway what you need to do to get your bike in the bag. As a good rule, whenever you're pulling your bike apart, to put it in your bike bag for your trip, work out of your toolkit from your bike bag. What I mean by that is, all the tools that you go riding with and you carry with you in your backpack or on your bike, they are the tools you should use 
to disassemble your bike to put it in the back. The reason for this is you might come across a tool that you need that you don't have then you can then add that to your toolkit. This is my toolkit here. This is pretty much all I carry with me. I carry a couple of other little things which I'll show you. This is the OneUp EDC. EDC stands for Everyday Carry. Hands down, the best toolkit you can carry with you. Why? It's a high volume pump. High volume means it pumps a lot of air but the pressure you can get is not that high, so it's ideal for mountain bikes because we only use 20 to 30 PSI usually. In the screw off part is a thing for a tire plug. These little sticky things here, these sticky strips, they push into your tire if you've got a puncture and they stop the air from coming back out. It's called a dog turn. Now that slides down inside there, so you put that in there and then you plug your tire with that. And then this little green thing here is a chain link tool and that helps you remove the quick release link on your chain, which these days are super hard to get undone. You used to be able to do it with your fingers with a bit of a wiggle if you are clever, but nowadays you pretty much can't get them undone unless you've got one of these, a little chain link quick release tool. Under this green bit of tape, a spare quick link for the chain. So if you break your chain, you take out the old link and you put the new link in there. That green tape, it's to stop it from falling out every time. I take out the multi-tool. The multi-tool, it has everything on it. One Up have done a fantastic job of making this tool perfect. I can tell that it's a group of riders who are engineers who have laid awake to think of how many different features they can pack into one little EDC tool. This thing is mint. All the size Allen keys you'll need for your bike, including an 8mm Allen key, which is the size for your pedal. Okay, we're gonna get the bike in the bag. Wheels off. Pro tip, as you remove anything, put it back. If it's an axle, put it back in, in the fork or the rear. Any nuts and bolts you take off, put them straight into your bike bag because there's nothing worse than arriving, building your bike and finding you've left your rear axle back in your house and then you're gonna spend the whole next day trying to find an axle for a zero or a V10 or something like this. So as you take stuff off, either put it back in your bike or pack it immediately into your bag. Don't leave it on a bench or a sofa or on the floor. Put it straight away somewhere safe in your bag that you're gonna take with you. Okay, before you take your back wheel off, pedals off. I always used to get confused about which way these go. So turn your bike upside down, point your crank towards the back of your bike, point your Allen key towards the front of your bike, make sure it's in good, and then you can lever down on it like this. Like I said, do your pedals first, because it gets hard when you start pulling parts off to do the pedals. I always forget, I always do them later. Now be careful, a lot of cranks have a little chromo or steel washer in here. If you have those on your cranks, get you a little zip tie that we showed you before, and then put a zip tie through here, so you don't lose your little steel washer. Okay, pro tip for zeroed bike owners or anyone that rides a pinion gearbox. This here, under here, is the tensioner spring. If you're riding off-road, these springs get dusty and dirty and they make a horrible squeaking sound. Put your favorite oil on your spring when it's nice and clean. Then, this is from a Lazine uh, CO2 canister refills. So you buy a pair of CO2 canisters, you'll get a little sock. You cut the sock to length and then, on top of that, you'll get fingers from one of these rubber gloves, cut them to length, and then throw them over the top. So I'm gonna use two for double the protection, and then you just pop them over like a tensioner spring condom, and that'll keep the oil in and the dust out, and that'll last like six months before you need to change your glove. Pro tip, pinion tensioner owners. Keeps the dust out, keeps the oil in, stops this from squeaking. There you go, whip the wheels off, chain off, wheel out. Remember, axle back in. As soon as you take it out, do something with it. Put it in your bag or put it back in your bike. Right, so now my wheels are off. My brake pads need the stoppers. These are Magura brakes, so you use the Magura stoppers. Pop them in so your calipers don't squeeze in or if you accidentally press your lever or the pressure from being in the flight might push your brakes in. So make sure you put your little brake spacer stoppers in there. Always have a quick check of your brake pads. Make sure you've got enough meat and carry a spare set of brake pads. Okay, so I've whipped my wheels off. Put my axles back in immediately, put my brake stoppers in, check my brake pads. So now it's time to flip the bike back over and put it in the bag. Okay, handlebars are still on, here's the next tip. Okay, so I'm using the EVOC bag. This is the EVOC Pro. It has some good points and it has some bad points. 
Good points first. The whole bottom is like a bathtub on the Evo Pro bag only. The other bags aren't like this. Now this is a huge advantage because it's much stiffer along the bottom. If you've got downhill bikes or big heavy enduro bikes and all your gear in your bag, the old ones would sag in the middle and when you're wheeling them along, the bottom would even drag on the floor. So the Pro is much stiffer in the bottom. It's a bit more expensive, but I think it's worth it because it's also much stiffer here between the wheels, so it doesn't flop over like all the other Evoc bags do. When you're carrying around the airport and you go from place to place, your bag is constantly flopping over like an old mattress. It gets old real quick. Some bad points, you can see I've got some screws in here and I've had to put those in to replace the rivets that pop out. I don't know why, I always seem to break the rivets out. It must be because my bag's always on a maximum limit for its weight, but those rivets pop out. Super annoying, I'm just gonna put bolts through instead to replace the rivets. And it comes with a little wheel that goes under the front here, and that wheel is wank. It is useless. If your bag weighs 15 kg and you're wheeling it along the smooth airport floor, then it's okay. But if it's over 20 kilos and you go over the smallest bump, pop, the wheel will pop off. Absolute waste of time, I don't even bother taking it with me. Now sometimes if you run a lot of stem spaces like I do, it's easy for, to forget your settings once you pop your stem off. I'm just gonna whip the stem off here. Always take your handlebars off via the stem because if you take them off by the handlebar clamp up here, you're never gonna get your handlebars in the same position as what, what you're used to. So instead of taking this off here, I always take them off at the stem. So I remember exactly how many spaces I have. I have a different color spacer set that's exactly the same thickness as my stem. So then I put my above stem spacers on, headset preload, nip that back up, and then I always remember how many spaces I have above and below my stem. And these replacement spacers being a different color is easy to see. My headset doesn't lose its preload. My fork doesn't flop around inside the frame. Okay, this next tip is proudly brought to you by United Airlines, you pricks. Every time you fly with your bike and pack it in the bag, take off your disc rotors. Now, you might get away with it 19 times out of 20, you might arrive and your discs are perfectly straight, but I guarantee at some point in time, some dickhead will bend your brake disc rotors. I was kind of fortunate enough fortunate enough for, for this to happen to me on the first time I flew. I was on my way to Vail in Colorado to go to an event and got my bike out of the bag, built it, put it together, spun my wheel and j -j 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 -j. Uh, the airline had, sorry, United Airlines had tar code my disc rotor. So I was up all night trying to make it straight with a shifter and a hammer and uh, I got a hotel noise complaint trying to straighten my disc rotor. And it wasn't the same all trip, but we had a little wobble in it. And if you're like me, you're really sensitive to setup and having a wobbly disc rotor is a nightmare. So you're either gonna have to put up with a bent disc rotor on your riding trip, or you're gonna be stopping on the side of the trail trying to straighten it with whatever tools you've got, or you're gonna spend half the day riding around all the shops to try and find a matching disc rotor. And if you're at a bike park, it's gonna be expensive. So save yourself the time, spend the extra one minute and whip your discs off. Takes no time at all. Disc rotor bolts, straight in your riding bag. What do you do with your disc? What I've done is just got a couple of pieces of plastic and made a disc rotor holder. It's got a little divider down the middle. So front goes down one side, back goes down the other side. Do a little hole, put a zip tie in the top there so your rotors can't fall out. And then throw that in the bottom of your bike bag. Frame pads going on, very important. These frame pads are actually really good. If you're going somewhere and doing shuttles, you can actually just leave this on and then you don't have to worry about other people's brake levers rubbing on your top tube and your frame or other parts of pedals and things like that rubbing on this particular part of your bike. And then when you go for a ride, just whip it off, throw it on the front of the truck. Good thing to take with you when you're doing shuttles. Okay, bike's in, everything's nice and secure, nice and tight. Slide your wheels in, no particular way. Now you've noticed that I have not let my tires down. I don't think you need to, but they only run 30 PSI, so even with the added pressure or lack of pressure, they're not gonna explode. So when the lady asks, did you let your tires down? Just say yes, and then you'll save yourself one job. I think that tire rule is for roadies who run like the maximum amount of PSI, like 120 PSI in their tire, 
and then when they fly somewhere, their tires explode. But for this, just don't let your tires down. If you can find them, grab a handful of colored zip ties. Choose your favorite color. I'm gonna go orange. Use an orange color zip tie and zip tie your wheel compartments together. That way, you'll know if anyone's been in your wheel compartment because your zip tie is not orange anymore or it's missing. It's a good way to keep track. And then, put the trip home, throw a few zip ties in there and then get your little flush cuts, throw them in there as well, they don't weigh much. And then, when you get to wherever you're going, click clack, undo your zip tie, away you go. Okay, let's go over a few little extra bits and pieces that I'll carry with me. I use an Usue tool roll because it's super light and you can fit a fair few things in it. And when it's rolled up, it pops in your bag nice. A Lazine shock pump, super light, super small, and you can pull it apart and it fits in your bag. Takes up no room, no weight, always good to have a shock pump. Zip ties, always have zip ties, they weigh nothing. Super handy. Patch kit with some glueless patches and an extra chain link. A Velcro. What's a Velcro, you ask? It's basically a Velcro zip tie. Reusable, super light, super handy, weighs nothing, no point in not taking it. In this side I have a 12mm opened end spanner because the EXT shock that I use requires a 12mm open end spanner only to adjust the high speed compression. A bladed spoke holder tool and the spoke key to fit my spokes. Handy to have with you in case you true your wheel on the side of the trail. An extra tire lever. If you're clever, you can get any tire on and off with only one tire lever. One day I'll show you how to do that. There's some tips and tricks for getting your tire on and off. A seal mate, an expensive tiny little piece of plastic with a hook on it. You can make your own, don't buy it, make your own. Use like a bit of school folder, cut it out with a little hook in it, and that can clean the dust out from around your seals. In between days, if you're doing a bit of bike maintenance and it's been super dusty, you can scrape the dust out from under your seals and pop a bit of lube underneath your seals. Seal mate. That is the extra tools I take with me. One more thing. One of these, it looks like another zip tie, but it's a bike lock, handy to have, doesn't weigh anything and it's super strong, no one's gonna be able to break that unless they've got proper tools to get into it. Bike packed, the tools that I carry on my bike and in my bag do everything to repair or replace every little part of my bike. There's not one extra thing that I need. Spare tube is on my bike, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it and you found some tip or trick that I told you about that you didn't already know about, tell me which particular one or ones in the comments below. If you knew everything that I told you, also tell me in the comments below. And thanks for sharing this video on your Facebook, on social media. Phew, right on guys.